Hello and welcome back to another episode on State of the YouTube channel. Today we are previewing another match, as I said in the last video, they are coming thick and fast at the minute, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and for those eagle-eyed viewers, you'll know that the next game is Northampton away on Tuesday. So, for that, I am joined by Danny from It's All Cobblers to Me. How are we doing, Danny? I'm all good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Really looking forward to the game, actually. Um, I've, not, I've not been down to Northampton, so... I'm okay. really looking forward to, to ticking off another stadium, uh, which is always, always exciting. A, it's always a bonus. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, I guess to kind of kick it off, um, sort of got to mention the first two games of the season. Well, three if you'd like to include the cup game. Um, no, we won't. And... No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be right. well, we'll stick to, I was going to say we'll stick to the league, but um, yeah, two losses in that. Yeah, two losses so far. Very, very different opponents. Stevenage came six fields on the first day of the season. We kind of knew what to expect from them because we'd had them last season quite towards the end of the seasons back in April. So we kind of yeah. knew what, what to expect. You know what you're getting with the Steve Evans side, uh, well-organised, physical. Um, I'll keep my doing opinions what, to myself. Doing what they do. <laughs> I mean... I don't. Yeah. It's it's it just is what it is, and we we didn't. We kind of tired after an hour. We should have been in front by the time they equalised. We you know, we should have took advantage of some of our chances and stuff like that. But as soon as the Steve Evans side takes the lead against you, you, and we start to tire as well, it was just game over from that point because we just we just we we're a little bit behind in our preseason anyway, and yeah. they they came and just out muscled us and put put players behind the ball and they did what they did and they did it well and they they. They did a real number on us, and I think Stephen and are going to be probably the better team of all the four that have come up because they've just they know what they're doing. They've signed good League One quality players, and um, yeah, they just they just know what they're all about, and they're they're, they're going to surprise quite a few people as they have done already. And I just don't mm. think we were quite ready for them on the opening day of the season physically and and all that kind of thing. So that was what it was. Very different game yesterday on Saturday against Wigan. You know that more of a much more of a footballing team. They pass the ball around which I think actually gave us a little bit more of a chance to show ourselves so we competed pretty well with them surprisingly mm -hmm. to me I, I was expecting a little bit of a barrage from them but we took the lead we controlled little pockets of the game but they just showed a lot of quality going forward in the end just that league one quality that you need and I don't know if you've seen the goal from McManaman but it was just two yes. seconds yeah, literally about two seconds before that, we'd had a chance at the other end and it's flashed yeah. wide. They've gone up the other end. McManaman's got the ball and he's called an absolute beauty into the top corner. And, it, and that's just the difference sometimes in League One. And that's the difference we've got to get used to. And I'm sure you've experienced it as well when you first came out, came up. It's mm. that difference in quality that can just turn in a flash. And it's something that we've got to, we've got to just take our chances and make the most of it because it is that type of that type of quality that's going to shine through sometimes. So yeah, very different defeats, but we're not feeling too down about it just yet. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, 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 we're doing the right in patches and you know, mm. it's, it's a case of getting used to the league, isn't it? I guess at the end of the day, your first, your first two games aren't going to win you or lose you the season. It's, it's just about knowing that you've, you've got that quality in there and being able to at least show mm. it, even if it is just in patches at the minute and you'll, obviously hope to get that consistency in to the point mm. where you can establish yourself as a bit of a mid-table team come um, sort of March, April time. So then you're not having to look over your shoulder, which is obviously, I guess that's ultimately the aim. And, you know, it's like you say with Wigan that they are a quality side. They've obviously got quality players. As have Stevenage, they've recruited really, really well in the summer. And like you say, at this league, it doesn't matter how hard you are to beat. It doesn't matter how good you are as a team. Sometimes... Mm. There are, there, there's always going to be a better player yeah. than, than than you've got. And, and it's as simple as that. So it's those little bit pieces of quality that can win the opposition games, but obviously can also win yourselves games. So on mm. that note, key players for yourself, who who have you who would you kind of pick out as the players that you think uh, at the end of the season, these are the people that are going to be spoken about in league two, in League One forums or in championship forums as players that league 
or championship sides could look at signing, for example. Mm. Uh, th- the, the main one, I would say so far, Mark Leonard. He was yeah. with us last last season in League Two. Um, ball playing midfielder. He's one of those players that will just dictate play. If you've ever... He's on loan from Brighton, so you can even yes. imagine kind of what the <laughs> style is. Um, I think there was some sort of um, like research done last season or something where right. where people were looking for a similar type of player to what Brighton already had. And so there were, there's loads of stats gone out about, across the whole league. And Mark Leonard mm. just happened to pop up as the first name that came out with all these all this data that was thrown into computers. And he just so happened to be a Brighton loanee on, on loan. Brighton, well. Brighton don't yeah. still have a player at the age of 21 if, if they don't yeah, think ex- he's going to be quality this, enough for them. This so, is true. Very, very yeah. true, and I, and I think in League Two, Leonard, he he, he kind of ticks along, but you might not have rec- noticed him as much just because you don't mm-hmm. get as much time on the ball from what I've seen so far and what we've experienced yeah. in the past. Um, in League One, we're getting in the ball a lot more, and he's dictating mm-hmm. play quite a bit. So he's the one that I would say, out of all of us, he's he is only on loan, and. If it is next season, he goes on loan to a championship club, potentially. I think he was linked to a couple of sort of top-end League One clubs this this right. summer as well. Um, he's the one that if you can stop him, which Stephen has figured out quite early, if you if you can yeah. stop the ball going to him and, and stop him from playing, you'll you'll do well um, because he will make us tick quite well. We've got to keep him fit. Um, well, hopefully the two of our central midfielders can can really fill that role and between the two of them can, can man-mark him. Mm. Yeah, if you, as I say, if you get players on him and stop him from getting the ball and yeah. playing, then that's that's a job done already. And you know, hopefully, what we'll see is players doubling up on him or whatever, and trying to take him out of the game. And other players need to come and step up and step up their game as well to to come and fill in. Um, other than that, Sam Hoskins, top scorer last season. Yep. Uh, amazing season from him last season because he's <laughs> he's never really done it in front of goal for us before last season and John Brady just mm. seems to have got the absolute best out of him over the last couple of years and for him to score 20 plus goals is mad the first first player for about 30 years to score 20 goals in the season for us oh, which wow. is insane okay. and um, he kind of drifts in from the left he's not an out and out striker he'll come in from yeah. the left hand side and, and uh, nip in and find goals that way so he got his first goal at the weekend uh, against Wigan free kick Top corner, we'll have some of that. He he scores penalties, free kicks. He'll, he'll was a very nice scores. was a very nice goal. I've had a chance to watch that one. It was really nice. Yeah, so he, he just seems to have come of age. The last he needs thirty now, but he seems to have properly stepped mm. into it under Brady. And sometimes you get that with managers, don't you? That of course, some, for, for whatever reason, a manager clicks with a player, and he and he's just kicked on. So yeah, quality from him. And um, yeah, Tyree Simpson probably the last one I'd say who yep. could potentially be a game changer at this level. He's coming on loan from Huddersfield. He's done the business for Swindon a couple of seasons back. And I noticed him a couple of years ago and I've, kept, I've been talking about him on the podcast for about two <laughs> years now and I've not I've not made people... And so it's just so funny that he's just come in and actually signed for us um, to keep him fit, get him firing. I think he'll he'll do good things because he's got, he's got something a little bit different, I think, and a little bit game-changing about him that he can power pass defenders and we'll give, he mm. gave Wiggins defenders quite a rough time at the weekend. Um He'll get on the ball. He'll spray passes out, and you just you can tell that he's got that little bit of extra quality about him that some of other forwards might not have. No, it, it's funny you kind of mentioned the, the sort of the irony and the fact that obviously you mentioned him a lot, and then the club end mm. up do actually signing him. Um, we did a we did a podcast a few a few weeks back now, probably over a month ago, um, about because we had a striker spot still to fill, and. Mm. Uh, Tyler Walker, who ended up being the player that we signed, was mentioned as one of the options. Dale mm. Taylor, who ended up going to Wickham, was one of the other options. And then what, the one I picked was uh, Mika Biareth, who mm. uh, is an Arsenal youngster. He went out to, uh, it was in the Eredivisie last season, and mm. has just today made his debut for Motherwell, or I think on loan. Um, and got a goal and an assist. So I felt very, very, very smug when I sort of, <laughs> that was my pick, and he <laughs> obviously got off and uh, and started doing well somewhere else, which, yeah, it's always a, it's always a funny little irony in that. Um, yeah. You sort of mentioned with uh, Sam Hoskins, just trying to bring mm. him back on track, <laughs> um, <laughs> mentioning with Sam Hoskins that he, uh, that he can sort of cut in from like the left-hand side. He's not necessarily an out-and-out striker. So mm. are you... Uh, does your team play in a kind of a front three? Do you, do you play with wingers? What what kind of formation are we expecting you to line up in? 
Yeah, so we we've gone to a three five two mainly this season. So we'll play okay. with um, with wing backs, and Hoskins will be slightly yeah. more infield than he was last season. It is uh-huh. he played last season more in a four two three one, so he'd be on the left of the three up front. Right but now, is yeah. is slightly more inside this season so far. I mean, he played right wing back for some of the game at, in the first day of the season, but that was just due to injuries and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> right. But I, I think sometimes that kind of gets the most of him that he can play in one in quite a few positions so you can see him kind of begrudgingly trudge off to right wing back sometimes <laughs> um but now it mainly will play kind of tucked in as a kind of one behind the behind simpson or alongside him when we go for a little bit further forward okay so that's so that's interesting so you sort of picked up on your on your wing backs um, we i've spoken a lot at length on both the podcast and in previews that i've done with other fans about about wing backs and how this it, it's not as simple as just having two different types of wing backs, but some teams really have wing backs that play as extra wingers to really try and mm. push forward. Uh, mm. And obviously, more, it could be situational within the game, of course. Um, so, for example, at a, a home game where you're really going at a team, maybe more likely to happen. But what's your kind of situation with the wing backs? Are they are they expected to push forward a lot and cr- help create the width, or are they more sort of part of a flat back five? Yeah, I mean, what we, we probably see when we go forward is one of them will go, the other one will stay right, back and okay. tuck, tuck tuck into a back four kind of thing when one yeah. of them goes forward. The majority of the time, it's Bruff on the left-hand side, Patrick Bruff at the moment. Yeah. Um, with, um, we've got Ali Koike injured at the minute, so Bruff's come in from Barrow um, last mm. year. He's done a good job so far, actually, and he'll be the one that yeah. mainly gets forward from the left. He almost scored, like I said earlier, against Wigan um, to give us what would have been the lead just before McManaman did his stuff. <laughs> um, a little bit annoyingly. Um, yeah. Ozzy Mayo is the one on the other side. Um, okay, he yeah. will get forward as well. So again, Bruff will tuck in if he goes forward. So it's, it's just a case of it'll go to a four when we're attacking and stay mm-hmm. as a kind of three or a five when we're, when we're going forward. Okay. Well, that's, defending, sorry. Yeah, no, that's, uh, it's, it's always, it's, I always find that part of the game. I mean, I mean, I find all parts of the game really interesting, but I always find it really interesting how, sort of different teams utilised two positions that, mm. let's be honest, most teams in our league seem to be playing with a three slash five nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So it's all, I always find it really interesting to see how different teams and different managers utilise those those positions at the minute. Yeah. Um, so, so stop me just from nerding out on wingbacks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, one thing I always like to ask people when I get them on for a preview is what how does... A team like yourselves, a fan base like yourselves, view Lincoln when you're coming up to play them. Do do you see us as a as a, as a winnable game all the time? Do you see us as a team that are gonna that you're gonna really struggle against? Mm-hmm. How what kind of tier level do you see Lincoln in? So I'll show my age a little bit here. I'll show my cards now. <laughs> I was um, I kind of grew up in a like mid nineties of Lincoln, and, and Lincoln fans will know what I'm talking about. Here. Any other fans will know what I'm talking about in the like a nineties Lincoln. I've got associations with being up and at um, It's set pieces. It's, you know, long balls. It's the air raid siren. I don't know if you still got that, the air raid siren. We, we do, we do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that kind of connotation that I've always yeah. had with Lincoln. It's that kind of big, big man, little man up front. It's the 4-4-2 and all that kind of thing. Um, what I've seen the last couple of years, the last maybe, you know, five, six, seven years, is Lincoln evolving into a, a more of a football inside. Um, so kind of, I have to put all of that kind of original bias behind me yeah. of what I view Lincoln <laughs> yeah. as. So whenever I go to Lincoln, it's more okay. We're going to be in for in for a game here, but it's not the same mm. the same kind of game as what it was like growing up for them. And and it, you know, to be fair, Lincoln fans probably think, think the same in Northampton and yeah. kind of the the Keith Kell, the Ian Atkins ball of what. Mm. And you kind of associate clubs with that, don't you? So I think now yeah. Lincoln are more a team now that I associate personally with a team that's come up to league one and what we should be aspiring to, because it's a similar kind of level of club, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Um, You've obviously built amazingly well in league one. You've had a good couple of cup runs that have funded a lot of sensible stuff for the club as a whole. And it's not just been like, let's go and spend loads of money on players. It's invest in the club and it's doing things what you'd call the right way, I think. And I, I kind of look at Lincoln now and think if we can be where you are in a couple of years time, I'd be really happy because you've not spent over your means you're doing things well you're bringing through young young players and you're making the best out of players while they're with you as well and i think it it's a it's a really difficult game for us i think on tuesday night obviously we've got no points you you're suddenly come into a really good bit of form in the league cup and then obviously in the league again uh-huh. on saturday um 
and I kind of feel like, oh, is it a bad time to be playing you now because you're coming into that form? So definitely it's a difficult yeah. game for us, as as most games will be in this league. But, you know, it's 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 a case of just looking at you as a as a kind of club that we should be looking at to kind of to kind of yeah emulate i guess yeah it's nice that you've kind of said that and, I, and it's something that's been sort of mentioned a few times by different league one fans mm. you know ultimately like you say we we are doing things the right way i think our kind of perspective on northampton the general fan base there's going to be a a hope and maybe for some it's even as much as an expectation i mm. definitely don't see it as an expectation but that that we are going to go out there and beat you on Tuesday. And I don't mm. think that's got anywhere near as much to do with Northampton as it does with us. You know, we've had two back-to-back yeah. -back games where we've played some really good football. Not just the results have been positive, but the performances have been outstanding, mm. you know, to a man ultimately. So mm. people are just expecting that to carry on. That's obviously, <laughs> it's not how football works, is it? As we as we all know, but and, and ultimately we're, we're going to be aiming at the end of the season to be above a team like Northampton. Mm -hmm. You know, no, no, no disrespect, but it, it's where we're where we'll be aiming, and we'll be aiming to try to push into those single digits and and maybe into playoffs. So, mm. yeah, it. I think from our perspective on you guys, it's very much a game that we want and um, hope to hope to win. But I guess kind of on on that on that point, score prediction. What do you think? Um, I, I really we we really need we've got the the big derby against Peterborough coming up on Saturday. Yes. So we're pretty desperate to go into that as a fan base with at least a point on the board because I just hate to go and face them. You go into a derby with no points on the board and it's they've got two wins out of two. They could potentially win again on Tuesday. It, it, you know, it's not a nice way to go into a derby if we go in with no points. I've, I'm really hoping that we get at least a point. I don't see us getting much more. I've got you down as dark horses myself for the, for the playoffs. Actually, I predicted you'd finish in the playoffs on our prediction yeah. board. Um, I'm going to go for a hopeful 1-1, I think, for this one. Do you know what? Part of me was was thinking, actually, that a uh, one all draw um, is maybe what I'd go with. And then I kind of decided, no, that was far too pessimist pessimistic. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go for, for a 2 0 victory. I'm going to see it as our third clean sheet in a row in, in all competitions and uh, our, what will that be, our seventh goal, of, um, you know, our sixth and seventh goal. Do I expect that to happen? No. Do I hope it happens? Very much so. Um, <laughs> it, it's not going to be an easy game, but like I say, it's one I'm genuinely really looking forward to, as they all are at the minute. I, I'm just really pleased with the club, both on and off the pitch, and I think mm. things are just going so well, but we're at the point where we all just enjoy Saturday 3 p.m. That's um, mm. a great, great, great position 45. to be in, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it it's is, so and that's and that's very much the thing. It's yeah, it's it's really nice, and and it then makes sort of creating stuff like this with people like yourselves really good. So on that note, guys who are watching, thank you for sticking around till the end. Make sure to go check out all the other content, the podcasts, uh, obviously all the other YouTube videos. If you've not, we, we released quite a few over the weekend sort of in succession. So you may have missed one or two. Go back and check them all out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're really closing on that 1,000 subscribers, Mark. I know it's been banged on about a lot, but we're really close now. And finally, please make sure to go and check out Danny on It's All Cobblers to Me. Really need to make sure. I, yeah, I've got that one right. There we go. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, Danny, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us all about Northampton and Cheers. good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, and all the best to you as well.